Hi folks, I'm Matt and it's time for a board game review. Okay, today we're going to talk about Firefly Kalidasa, the newest expansion I picked up at Gen Con. If it's not available yet in stores, it will soon be. Uh, of course, I got this little early release at Gen Con, as I said. And since we've been talking about Firefly for the past, oh, I don't know, month, I thought we'd continue our talks on it. Of course, here it gives you some extra game pieces, some more alert tokens, uh, complete tokens that you can play during in this expansion here, more disgruntled tokens, a token talking about what a Corvette contact is, and I'll talk more about that later. And then of course another piece that you'll fit over the base game, over Harvest, you'll fit this piece over it and it'll say Higgins, because Higgins is a new contact. In fact, let's go ahead and talk about Higgins. Look at Magistrate Higgins there. Now if you're solid with him, look at this, he has a stubborn grudge. He's not going to deal with you or work a job for, you can't work a job with him if Jane is in your crew. I love that. That's so funny. Now if you're solid with him, of course you get to have one plus active job working, you're working. So you can have four active jobs you're working if you're solid with Mastray Higgins. I like that. I like that. Uh, next up is Fanny and Mingo, of course, from the movie. Uh, when you complete a transport job, you can take $500. That's neat. And just like the Baron from the Blue Sun expansion, uh, they are selling cart, well, not cargo, but contraband for $400. So you can pick up contraband from them and sell it to someone else. Of course, you see contraband $600 for. Um, Patient, 700 for Badger, and so on and so forth. Of course, these are expansion cards that can go into the Kalidasa set that have you go out into this board here. Now, I don't have the whole board out because I just didn't have time. I'm way too lazy. Uh, but as you can see, the board here has new planets. It actually fits. If you have the big board here, this board will fit right here on this edge, on the right side of the uh, map there. And as you see, there's a lot of different uh, new planets there. Of course, there's heaven and angel is not too far away. That's kind of funny. Uh, but there's all the planets you can find there. Now, this card does come with a new pilot. Uh, I like the extra option. This is right. He's a dirty slaver. He's a grifter there. Whenever you deliver fugitives, you make an extra $100 per fugitive. This also counts as immoral. And he's a good bounce of all three uh, things that you need. Uh, I, I like that we have extra uh, options for that. Uh, for captains. Uh, as you see here, we have rim space, alliance space, and border space cards for your deck. Wait, why, why would you need all of those? I mean, there's hardly any border space here, and there's a lot of rim space, but there's no alliance space. Why would you need those cards? Because we now have the Alliance Corvette. Look at this. And this sucker is relentless. He will follow you across anywhere in the verse, whether it be rim space, alliance space, or border space. As you know, reavers can enter alliance space. The alliance cruiser ship can enter border space or rim space. But yet this one, this alliance corvette, it can go through all three and cross over. It will relentlessly follow you wherever you go. So this, a lot of these cards in these decks have to deal with this ship. Whoop, dropped him. He's gone now. Anyway, uh, so that is really interesting. I like this card. I, I like this, uh, actually, this figure here. I like the extra threat of a Federation Corvette cruiser chasing you across the verse. Just adds more danger to the game. Now, of course, it also comes with more rules to play, which is very interesting. I like how they get uh, inventive with some of the games you can play with this set here. And look at this. They also put a scavenger hunt game in here, which I think is highly hilarious and would love to play with my friends. It seems like a lot of fun. So give it to Gale Force 9. They came up with very creative ideas on how to play this game. Now, of course, that's not all. I'm going to do a card deck review because I always do that. Uh, you see the new uh, deck here is Beaumont. They do have some cards for the other ones. I'm going to go through those first and we'll go through the Beaumonts later. So let's go through a few of them. First off, this is a border space nav chart. You discard it to look at the top five cars in the border space nav deck. Return the cars at the top of the deck in any order. I love this card. Uh, now they have them for all three decks there, uh, but it almost guarantees that you know what's going to happen or you want to screw someone else over because they don't. you don't want them to get away with something. Uh, this has a lot of options and I really do like these cards. And there's a lot of these uh, cards in the deck. So you'll see a lot of them. Uh, you'll also see a lot of mutters. You can remove them from play at the Harvest Red Sun and take an extra $500 because you're selling them back to Higgins. Of course, this counts as immoral. I think this is hilarious. 
So you can sell indentured servants. for You buy them for 100 sell them for 500 You're making a profit. It is immoral, but eh, I would do it. I'm mean. I'm dirty. There's another mutter. You're going to see lots of mutters in here. Uh, another card that they have. Ooh, almost lost that mutter. Uh, it's a ship upgrade. It's a mission, uh, emissions recycler. It's a 1 plus full burn range. Now, I would get it just for that because I love that option. But it says, hey, if you draw two big black cards, those are those keep flying cards, nav cards. If you draw two in a row while full burning, you may take one extra fuel and limit once per flash. And that's really neat. So it actually can give you more fuel. But they didn't have to put all that in because they had me at the one plus fuel burn range. I always love things that make my ship go faster. There's another border space nav card. We talked about that. Another emissions recycler. Uh, there's nav charts for rim space. Uh, this one I do not understand nor see the point of. Maybe one of you fans can tell me this. Wash his Hawaiian shirt. You can discard it to reshuffle any one nav deck. Counts for three, it costs 300 bucks. You'd have to discard it for that. Why would you pay 300 bucks just to reshuffle one of these decks? Sure, if someone used a nav card and they were ready to go, you could play Wash's uh, Hawaiian shirt and then kind of totally screw them over. But what would be the point in wasting 300 bucks just to screw someone else over? I, I don't get it. If it was free, Yes, I can see picking up this card. <laughs> I can't even see picking it up for 100. So if there's a strategy that I am missing, folks, with this card, please let me know. Because I hate cards that seem worthless, and that card, to me, seems worthless. Okay, so there you go. Nav chart cards for border space, alliance space. Here's hydraulic docking clamps uh, for crime jobs. Also count as salvage ops. That's awesome. As you know, a lot of cards say, hey, if this is salvage op, collect X amount. Well, now your crime jobs also count as salvage ops. That $600 you spend can easily make itself back and plus give you tons more money if you get that ship upgrade. Uh, more nav charts for rim space, right there. Here's another mutter. Uh, can you imagine being an extra in the show and no one knowing who you were until now that you have your own card in the game? You're like, yay, look, there I am. That'd be really awesome. I wonder if they think like that. There's another mutter. Here's a barkeep. It says giving, giving your crew shore leave at a supply planet is free. You don't have to pay $100 per crew member, which is really nice. So if you're over here in Beaumont, you want to go ahead and give them some uh, uh, shore leave. If you have the barkeep, it's free. Instead of paying all that money, $100 per crew. I like that. You have extra ammo clips that you can discard to reroll one of your test scores and fighting. Uh, more mutters right here. There you go. Another mutter. More nav charts. Again, love the nav charts. Here's med foam. Uh, it says discard to count as having made a successful med check. Yes! If you definitely don't want one of your crew members to die, med foam. You gotta get it. I love that card. More nav charts. Alliance space. Med foam. Here's Yolanda's pistol. You can discard it to reroll any of those fight tests. It does count as a firearm, so neat. Only 400 bucks, not bad. Roberta, one of my favorite cards in the deck. She counts as a companion, and you can discard Roberta instead of losing a solid rep with a contact. I don't know why you would discard Roberta. I know I wouldn't, but uh, it comes with a fake ID as well, so I love Roberta. I totally forgot about Roberta, so I'm glad they put her in the game. Here's Grimy. He's an errand boy, a mutter. When you discard a gear card, you can roll the die. If you roll a six, you keep that gear card. Otherwise, discard as normal. Now you're thinking, okay, that's kind of neat, but how often would I roll a six? It gives you a chance to keep those one and done gear cards. But you know what? He's free. And I think that's fantastic because if he was even a hundred bucks, I'd be like, mm, I don't know if he's worth it. But for free, and he has that little special option that may or may not help you, yeah, he'd be worth it. Now, by the way, also, how pissed would you be if you were this kid? You didn't get a name in the series, but now in the card game, they call you grimy. You'd be like, oh, man, I suck. Anyway, so uh, here's Holder. It says, when you make work uh, on a planet, you can also take a fugitive token. Making work is maybe mainly just sitting at a planet and not doing anything and getting paid 200 bucks. Just using an action of that just to get, make some extra money. But this way, he also gives you an extra fu uh, fugitive token, which I think is kind of neat. You have the foreman here. He's the mutter manager. When you have three or more mutters in your crew, uh, he counts as two more weapon tokens instead of just one. He'd be a three plus on his own, not with weapons. So that's really awesome. He could be very powerful if you choose to make him do so. Uh, you have Fess, who can, from any location, you can use a deal action to deal with Higgins 
and accept or discard jobs as normal. So he'll call his dad and you can take the top card from the deck and see if you want to work it or not without having to fly to harvest. That is super cool. That also counts as a hacking rig as well. Uh, they've made a really good idea out of that. You ne next have a fan dancer. Uh, you can discard it to ignore a warrant issued. I love that. Warrants cost $1,000 to clear. They're very difficult uh, to get rid of and uh, difficult to have in the game. You could lose a solid with a rep, but for only 300 bucks to discard it and discard the fan dancer, hey, eh, hey, she may be worth keeping around. Plus, I also like that two negotiation skills as well. Some other stuff from Beaumont is Zoe's Mars Leg Rifle. It says when making uh, those tests, you can roll the dice and use the highest number from those two die. That's really neat. Here's Zoe's Flak Jacket. If a crew member carrying this is killed, discard this card instead. So when you are attacked by Reavers and they have to kill one of your crew, make sure it's the one that's wearing the flak jacket because then you can still save them without having to do a medic check. It only costs $200. Wonderful, wonderful idea. Here's Wash's nav charts. This is like the wild card of nav charts. You can select any of the decks, pick the top five cards, shuffle them any order you want. Uh, again, love the nav card option. Here's Busker. When you uh, make work, of course, sit on that extra planet, you take an extra $100. So instead of $200, you get $300 if you have Busker. I like how they've made the make work action a little bit more special with those two crew members because that's something that hardly anyone in any of our games do anymore is make work. I think beginners will do it at first, but when they realize they're really just wasting an action, a lot of people don't use the make work option. So this would maybe entice someone to do some more make work. Of course, there's more med foam. Here's Mal's sniper rifle. It says before each uh, test, remove one disgruntled from the owner. Remove a disgruntled from the owner. So that's really neat. It counts as a sniper rifle and a firearm. So again, it's really awesome. Love that picture too. This is a labor contract. It says from any location, you may use a buy action to hire one crew from the Space Bazaar discard pile for free. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, Matt, hold on. A lot of those crew members aren't going to cost 500. They're going to be like 300 or less. Yeah, but you don't have to drive, fly all the way to the Space Bazaar just to get one of them. You can just pick them up with this card. Now, they have them for all of the plants there. There's Silverhold, Regina, and Persephone. But I really, really love the idea of these cards. Again, another brilliant idea by Gale Force 9. Here's Jane's holdout pistol. It can be used in kosherized fights and doesn't count toward gear limit. Of course, kosherized fights are the times when, if it's kosherized, you can only use the number the the symbols on their card you can't use any guns or weapons or gear well with the holdout pistol you can use this one so it's like a holdout and it doesn't count as gear limit so it's an extra gun i really like the idea of that card here's a card i love in ours guild papers it counts as a companion <gasps> that's awesome because as you know there aren't enough companions in this game so having guild papers that count as a companion can really be a bonus Definitely worth the thousand dollars, in my opinion. Next up is Inara's bow. Counts as two fight skills. That's really nice. And when it's carried by a companion, you reroll all ones on those fight tests. That's really neat. Look at that picture too. Love the picture. Love the art there. All right. So uh, here we go with extra ammo clips. You can discard it. Of course, we've talked about that. Gambling, as you know, I love gambling cards. This is when you buy this card, roll two dice, take one hundred times the total number of dice, and discard the card. So you can make as low as 200 or make as high as 1,200. I love gambling. That's so fun. Uh, here's some more hydraulic docking clamps. Another emissions recycler. Glad they have extras. Here's one that's called Board Game Collection. I love this. It's a ship upgrade. You can use a buy action to give your crew shore leave in any sector. So instead of having to pay them, you can just use it as an action and undisgruntle them. There's, I guess a lot of complaints were about the game that a lot of people get disgruntled all the time. Well, they came up with a lot of ingenious ways to get rid of those disgruntlements, and this is one of them. I love that card. And of course, here finally is another barkeep. So what do I think of the Kalidasa expansion? First off, I don't even know how you pronounce the name because I've never heard anyone say it, but I think it's Kalidasa. Anyway, I'm sure you're going to murder me in the comments if I got that wrong. But uh, I like the expansion. I think it's awesome. If you ask me to choose between that and Blue Sun, I could not tell you which one I think I like better. Uh, like I said, I'm just playing with my friends on the base game. I'm still introducing it to a lot of people before rolling out a lot of the expansions on them. 
But if you've been playing it before and you want to decide which one, ah, you've seen the reviews, you make the call yourself. Uh, I think Kalidasa is a great expansion. I love the bigger board. I know a lot of people complain now that, oh, the board is so big, it won't fit on my table. But you know what? I love, I love the concept of a bigger board. Bring it. I want to get nine people around there and I want to have a massive game of Firefly using the entire map. I think that would be awesome. So that is not a complaint of mine. Again, I think if you like Firefly, if you love the game already, then go ahead and buy this expansion. Gale Force 9 keeps getting creative and I look forward to seeing how creative they'll be in the future. All right, gamers, that's all for now. Till then, game on!